Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne and Justin, who you can't see. He's invisible. It's my invisible friend, the voice in my head. You know, he's that kind of thing. Right, Justin? Well, we've lost him. Yep. There well, he is. Sorry, <laughs> my I'm invisible sorry. friend went away. <laughs> I was grabbing some Advil. <laughs> Drugging himself up to deal with me. Yes, that's what my invisible friends do. <laughs> I can't well, take Advil. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, hello, hello Jedi Jared and Margaret and Freestyle and Twisted Oma and MCC and Striding Ergorn and, and McBalance <laughs> uh, and Cornico and Hydromane and Freestyle and Daffodweer and Ottermel. Oh my gosh, we've got a lot of people this morning and Elvie and Anki and Robin and Bigos and Zewo and Sethany. Oh, yeah, when you're, that's writer's block. Writer's block is when your imaginary friends won't talk to you. That's, that's the official, uh, official definition. So, hi, Scott Beal. Hello. Wow, there are a lot of you this morning. I'm very happy. Good. You can watch me uh, uh, kind of like fumble my way through uh, creating a base for... Uh, actually, this is going to be several. This is going to be a couple parter. I'll tell you that. Um, because my idea be began somewhat ambitious. And then when I realized that I was going to be using a wood block, it became even more ambitious. Um, so we shall, uh, we shall cover a lot of things about creating a base for a larger model that is pretty and neat and dynamic. Um, over the course of the next several days. I'm not sure how many days it'll take, uh, but definitely two, maybe three, because there's going to be some construction stuff and some composition stuff and some template stuff and stuff and stuff. But we'll talk about um, a bunch of stuff this time. We're going to talk about materials and adhesives and general design tips uh, and stuff like that. So... Yes, we are getting to basics. And I am not known for basing. The great irony is that I am not known for basing now. Uh, Michael Proctor is definitely the guy with all the basing mojo. Uh, but I used to be known for basing back in the day. I used to do a lot of eBay, and, and I learned that I could essentially get a model uh, a little bit higher prices by putting nice basing on it. So I learned how to do bigger and nicer bases. So now I'm getting back into that. Uh, I have this resin frost giant queen. I have a resin copy uh, instead of the uh, you know one of the prototypes, and uh, I really want to put her on a nice base because I've wanted to paint this model for a very long time. Uh, so I was thinking about it last night. I'm kind of planning what I my concept is. So we're gonna kind of figure out if that concept will work uh, today, and uh, maybe some of the best ways to do it. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hi, Coobs. Good to see you. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well this morning. We're almost to the weekend, which is a plus, right? All right, so let's just get to it. Let's go and uh, segue into our thing. Let me actually remember to deactivate my pro tips intro for once. And there we go. All righty. So you all know Frost Giant Queen. A lot of you probably have her. There we go. Hey, Miss him. So what I have done here, what I was doing last night is I was looking at various sizes of bases that I had, and I realized that I actually didn't have any of the big, I was going to use one of those big pie plate bases, you know, the ones that'd be about this wide. Um, and then I realized that I actually didn't have any. I must have uh, chucked them or put them back uh, in Reaper stock before I left. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I was like, oh no's, and then David really didn't have anything tremendously huge. Uh, because when we work on bigger stuff, we typically use a big plinth uh, to base it. So then I had to dig through my supplies and find my wood blocks. Um, and of course, these are super cheapos. You can get them at Hobby Lobby for like two ninety nine for four of them. And I think it's a two by two. Um, and this this is decent. Um, howdy from Illinois. Yes, howdy from California. I had to I had to stop there in my brain course there after you said that and say uh, made a, make a conscious effort to say California instead of Texas. I almost said Texas automatically. Um, I don't want my new state to kick me out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not a big fan of Hobby Lobby either, Hydromane. To be fair, you could probably also get these at Michael's. So you could probably also just order them on the interwebs. So if you don't want to do Hobby Lobby, because I know I'm also in that boat, um, I, I only go there when I, when I absolutely have to get something quick and I know exactly where it is in that store. But now I don't even know where there is a Hobby Lobby around here. So I'm going to be stuck getting stuff at uh, various other places. Yes. Some people like Hobby Lobby, some people don't. But uh, anyway, so generally my guideline is that your base, let me, let me raise up my cam here. Let's raise up cam. 
you can see uh maybe you can see a sleepy kiri dog let's see here yep there she is sleepy kiri dog is cashed out see there y'all got a kiri shot this morning you should all be happy there we go all right so we'll get this kind of there uh, Kuriniko, some of their political practices are, um, uh, some people like them, some people don't. Um, let's just leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, so, and it depends on if you care about the ethics of the businesses that you, um, that you support, right? And some people don't, and some people do. And some people would like their ethics, so. All right, so here we go. So my general guideline for a base is that it should not be more than half the height of the figure. Um, when you get really, really large with a base, unless you're building a very vertical composition, you get to the point where the base is just going to overwhelm the figure. So when I build a bigger base, I try very hard to make sure that the figure is still the focal point of the piece. Now you can work around this a bit if you are working with dark colors on your basing or a lot of natural stone or dirt, you know, a lot of that. Uh, then it's easy to make the figure stand out on top. But you still don't want to make the mistake where you have the huge base with the one figure in it and the base just doesn't have a lot going on. So essentially, if you're going to go with a slightly bigger base, and this is slightly taller than half of her, um, you know, then my question is, you know, do you have, uh, will you have enough visual interest to, uh, to rationalize using this large of a base? Uh, in my case, I don't have much choice because anything smaller is not going to be wide enough for her. She's going to be very like, like, you know, perched on top of this small thing. And I really wanted to give her some ground, um, because her width is, uh, is greater. So I wanted her to look balanced on a base. I would be happier if I was more dealing with a little bit of a lower base, but instead I've decided to kind of build down. So I don't, I'm, I don't use a Dremel. I'm not real comfortable with it, but what I can do is I can build out some rock texture on this big block and then I can reduce it and make it look less like a big block. You know, I can disguise the fact that I'm using a big block. A lot of people, you'll see them use Dremels to very cleverly like dig out areas of the block so that they can make it a lot more dynamic and put maybe a pool of water and stuff like that. That's really cool. Um, and uh, another way to do this, another way to break it up. Um, hello, Pendrake. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a great model. So I still need to do some putty work on her. I still have some uh, little divots of, of putty roughness that I need to green stuff over. Um, but she is a fantastic model and I have wanted to paint her for forever. So we are going to put a fancy, fancy base on her. So one of the things that I like to do is to kind of get, if I'm going to do that, I need to, uh, I need to do a template. So what I did is I grabbed a sticky note. And I'm like, well, I want, I want essentially to have rocks and uh, stuff coming out just a little bit, right? I don't want a lot. If I put her here, I just need a little bit. I don't want to put a lot of boring foreground in front of her. I want it to be interesting. So if I'm just going out a little, I need to kind of make a template. And a sticky note is kind of a good way to do that. So I grabbed a sticky note. And this lets you kind of see. All right. Turn it over once you've stuck it down. And you can kind of make... Uh, a little template. So you got to decide, first of all, if you're going to leave the back blank. And in my case, hmm, that's a hard call. I think I'm going to leave it blank for now. Always keeping in mind that I can always add a little texture back here. Um, and I might because I think I'm going to hang it off the back a little. But for now, for this first layer, I need to essentially say this is my edge of my base. And then how far do I want it to go? Well, I'm going to just kind of guesstimate. I want, I want a little bit like that. I want a promontory on the front. Um, this is just a, you know, just kind of a working sketch. Kind of like that is what I'm thinking. I want a little bit of a projection. That might be too much once I do it, but we'll see. So then I can take this and look, what do I have? I have cork. Woohoo! And so this is a nice thick cork. Um, I think it's about half an inch. I have lost the packaging a long time ago, but I do have a ruler, so I am able to, is it quarter inch? Is it, it is about, it's just, it's five eighths, I think. So this is the thicker cork. You also can work with layers of thinner cork, 
which work uh, just fine. But what cork is good for is it's soft and easy to break, and it's a good, fast way to build up bulk without like using a crap ton of Fimo, Sculpey, expensive things like that. Um, its downside is that it is so lightweight that pinning things into it can you know, be unstable. It's definitely not a very stable medium. It's made to crumble. At the same time, you know, you can flex it a bit and it doesn't like inherently want to die. So it's not too bad. So what I will probably do is I will put this roughly toward the edge that I want it. Let's see. I don't want to waste too much. Can I go all the way out here? Let's see. I may want to put it out here. No, yeah, that's not going to work. All right. Well, we may just do that and just chip away at it. So I'm gonna use this section. Gonna make sure that I'm up to my edge there. The, the other nice thing about cork is that it is flat on both sides, but of course you can muck that up with basing materials and disguise it. But what it does give you is a good surface. And I do need my cutting mat. Um, it's a good surface for you to work on right so you know that you can mount your figure on it because it's flat you can keep some flat spaces you know that you can put it on top of a flat base and it's gonna you know sit flush you know so it's a nice nice that way i've got my little cutting mat don't want to scar my paper i have a tiny 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 cutting mat because i don't use it very often all right so i'm gonna line that up so at least i can utilize one flat side here and then i'm gonna cut this side more or less in line with my template. Okay. okay, I've got that one side and now I'm just gonna kind of gouge. And I'm not gonna necessarily go right with my template because when I start crumbling this cork, I'm probably gonna lose more material than I think. So I am gonna go out a bit from my template. And obviously, since I kind of just haphazardly sketched my template, I don't have to worry too much about not fitting directly, you know, real precisely into it. But I do, up. Oh, there's my edge. Okay, that's cool. That's cool to know. So I can cut down here all the way through. And mostly by gouging it in this way, I'm just making it easier for me to break off pieces so that I can get a shape that I like. Yay. All right, so now I can get this up and kind of start prying it apart. And you can kind of see, see how it's breaking along the line that I originally sketched out and it breaks quite easily. And then I'm gonna break it along this line, which I can see my knife scores. And be gentle with it. Don't have to, if you haul on it, you risk breaking off more pieces than you want. It does crumble, so be ready to make a mess. I'm gonna leave that. I can always make this roughed up. So like if I don't want that sharp corner, I can just pluck it off. See, it's really easy to just pluck and pull little bits off um, the way you want it. So now I have to break this part too. Perfect. And obviously, you know, you could get really rough, messy sides from this, but don't worry about it. You can always fix them with putty. Uh, afterwards, I'm going to keep my extra, I always keep a Ziploc bag around with where I can put my extra pieces in because these little tiny bits make really good rocks because they're flat on one side. So you can stick them down on bases and they make a, they're really good for that. All right. So template, I can move you. I am thinking. So my question now for myself, let's see, got it. Got to get you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and that's the thing actually we're out of right now, Chewy, um, is CA glue uh, or, or uh, PVA glue. We just ordered some more uh, because it was like, oh no, I need to build this base. <laughs> so we're kind of out. We may have to walk to Walgreens later and just pick up some um, from their school supplies section. Uh, because yeah, that is the material of choice, right? So, and it does, it soaks in, hardens it. Paint does a lot of the same thing. When you're dealing with glues and adhesives, uh, especially when you're just dealing with PVA or, or CA glue, um, remember that, uh, paint and glue are very close cousins. Uh, the glue, however, does have some other, um, 
chemicals in it that does make it a little more absorptive for some materials and uh, makes it a little more matte um, and generally uh, makes it a little stickier. So, all right, so now my question is, am I gonna start, do I wanna build a layer for her to stand on on top of this base or do I wanna do what I was originally going to do which was to actually drop this down? I think I'm gonna try to drop it down. So what we're doing for that is I'm gonna reverse my template Try to make sure that I've lined it up well with the edge. There's my edge there. Here's my edge. Again, I don't have to be terribly precise. I just need to make sure I'm relatively lined up. Now we're going to see if this works or if it's too narrow and if it crumbles. So I'm going to have to cut a little deeper here. And essentially, I'm making a skirt to go around the edge of my wooden base to break it up. And I just thought this might be fun. This is something that I would normally probably build out, build out with green, but I want it to be pretty chunky. So we were gonna see if we can make this work. It is thick cork, so I may be able to pull it off, but it is also very crumbly, so. Oh no, I lost a piece. Well, keep that piece, because you can always push it back on. We'll see if this is fraught with peril or if I managed to pull this off, guys. This is such crumbly cork, and it is not new or new and fresh either. It is pretty old, so I am asking a lot of it to do this, to cut a precise shape. But if it crumbles, I can just stick it on in pieces, so it's not a big deal as long as I can get my nice flush cut. Yeah, I'm losing my edges. See, see, it does, it does love to crumble at the edges, so that is the downside of cork is how soft it is. All right, let's see if I can manage to cut this. There we go. All right, so that more or less worked. Now I can clean it up a little. So my what my idea was, yeah, um, we're going to talk about Styrene in a second, Corsair, Corsair right? Um, it does wash out. Yeah, essentially what they're dealing Pendra with it, Pendrake, is it's it doesn't cure. Um, it doesn't cure. So it's pro they're probably using. Um, less resins in it uh, so that it never quite really sets so that water will reactivate it. Um, this is uh, this is a thing. So essentially what I want to do is I want to build this skirt out here. And to support that, yes, I can use plastic card. We're going to talk about plastic card like in a second because that's also another good way to do this. But first I'm going to try to clean up my edges here. Let's see. Kind of need to clean up these and take these little parts out that are keeping it from being close. Just a light touch with a knife can kind of help you with that. We just want it to set, to sit on there pretty flush. Actually, that is really good. So that's, that's good. I can, I'm pretty happy about this. Um, they may leave out or minimize an ingredient, Pendrake. Um, there are, there are, okay, so there are certain resins that set more than others. Pigments in their natural state, most pigments, sorry, they are now making self, um, self-setting pigments, but most pigments in their natural state do not set. They do not actually ever dry. They will reactivate just like watercolor paints do, um, when you add water. So to get around that for our acrylic paints, they add, you know, various resins in their water base. And those resins are actually what set and fix the medium. Um, they will fix the pigments. So what I think the school glue is essentially is just uh, has, um, it has less fixative. It has less, uh, less resins in it. So yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now we talk about Plastruct. All right, so various types of plastic card in the world, you guys, and uh, they are a good thing to work with like this. If I wanted to, for example, um, like as I'm thinking of doing, is represent some broken flagstones on the top of this base. So they do make, Plastruct in particular, makes a set that is a uh, patio stone. What you can do with these is you can cut out chunks of them, irregular or regular, and uh, it gives you a ready-made pattern if you don't want to do your own. So, oh, you always injure yourself. Yeah. 
<laughs> Corsair, thank you. Yeah, well, it's the chemistry, right? I used to talk to paint chemists. I talked to them about glue, actually, because um, I knew they were similar. And Elmer's glue and some other glue alls actually dry very um, matte, but they are also extremely smooth. So I was talking to a lot of chemists about that while we were creating Master Series to try to figure out if we could get that effect. Um, and uh, I learned some cool chemical stuff that sometimes there, there are chemicals when they evaporate that naturally pebble a surface and cause it to appear matte. So in the end, it wasn't something that I could utilize for most of the line, but it was interesting to know for future reference. All right, so I have all sorts of plastic card. Um, you can just get it in regular sheets. You can get it in all sorts of thicknesses. It is extremely useful stuff whenever you're building your own bases. Um, if you get the really thick stuff, though, it can be hard to saw through. Like I have some, this is really thick. This is 2.5 millimeter. Let's see, I'm cut it open in. I've used the 2.5 millimeter to build as the base, essentially, for very large models like, you know, T-Rexes, uh, Stegodons, things like that. This stuff is so thick. See it? This is really, really thick plastic. So you pretty much have to use a jeweler's saw on it to get a nice shape. Um, something to cut it, but once you do, it's not really bendy. So you can use this as a base if you want to create your own base. Like if you have a, the big T-Rex or you have a, a big uh, dinosaur or a dragon, I mean, it, it's big, right? It's a big sheet. It's tremendously huge. Um, and so you could mount a dragon on this sucker. And if you doubt it, like if the dragon is metal and really heavy, you could use a double layer of this and get a five millimeter, just glue these two sheets together and get a, just putty the edge um, and get a very, very firm base uh, for a dragon if you wanted to, if you don't have an otherwise available base. So styrene is, uh, is useful and they do sell multi-packs of it with different sizes of it. And those are very useful as well. Um, like a variety pack uh, will give you uh, some really thin stuff, some really thick stuff, all that sort of thing. So... My question for myself right at this moment is, one, how thick of a styrene do I want to use? And two, do I want to use this textured one? And I guess I'm going to put my giant on top of the textured one and see if these stones look like they might be kind of a good choice for her. I was kind of thinking of something bigger uh, originally. Oh, yeah. Oh, foam core, the problem... Uh... Hey, Nomad Z. It's good to see you. Um, the problem with foam core is, is, and the reason I used to use, try to use it for basing for terrain pieces, but I mean, it, it, the problem is once you moisten one side of it, it tends to curve, you know, it does buckle when you add moisture and that includes gl glue. Um, so I really got frustrated with it, uh, doing that. Now you could use foam core and sandwiches, sandwich it with plastic card. That's very doable. So, you know, instead of cork, if you were trying to bulk up a base, get a nice thick base. Um, you could sandwich plastic art sheets on either side and do that that way, get your, get your thickness that way. Um, so that, that does work. That's perfectly viable. Yeah. Yeah. The curve issue is annoying. Um, I don't know if I want to use this, uh, this tile pattern. The problem is that it, okay. So using this is nice out the gate because it does give me a pattern to follow, but it also limits my creativity, um, because I'm, you know, sticking kind of to their pattern and their sizes, um, and I was kind of thinking I might go chunkier. So maybe instead I want to cut out some bigger tiles from one of my plastic cards. Let's see here. I know that I have even more plastic card that's open, but right now, oh, and this is my grid one. Okay. So that's not going to work. So I'll have to use this. Doo -doo -doo. Pulling out piece of styrene. So this is thin, pretty thin edge. You can see it there. Um, and as you can see, it's bendy cause it is thinner. But I think I might want to use this instead. And the, what using this will do, and I can still choose to go with my patterned plastic if I want to, but I can put down a layer of this first to support my uh, my cork base, and then I can maybe build some step some uh, some stones on top of it. So it's an extra step, but it's probably going to give me a little bit better of a result. I think. Let me get to where I was there. I was there before. Yeah. All right, so, and unfortunately with no um, PVA glue, I'm going to be uh, probably using super glue, which is less than optimal, but will probably work. Uh, so I want 
to do essentially a thing over the top of this. So I'm going to have to cut out a piece that's very similar. Do, do, do. See, this is little did you know, guys, that my show would be uh, disguised uh, as Terrain Tuesday uh, for this. <laughs> I, I really didn't intend to take over Terrain Tuesday, but it appears that I have done it. All right, I'm going to put my block on here. Oh, I've got a little particulate bit. I just want enough to kind of reinforce this as it's closer to the thing, so I don't need a lot. I have my little Sharpie. Yeah, it's Terrain Tuesday on Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, I know hobby stores being closed right now. It makes it harder, right? I like painting terrain, um, but I haven't done like a base that's really like big and and uh, elaborate like this for a very long time. <laughs> I just wanted rough guideline so that I can cut that. And I actually probably can cut this with the scissors because that's the nice thing about thin plastic art is. Uh, you do not need to mess around with hobby knife if you don't want to, as long as it's rough. So I'm going to cut this sucker. Yeah, I can do it. I've got my non-stick scissors here. I may distort the edge a little bit, but probably not too much as long as I keep my lines straight. And since I'm working on a corner, that helps. There. And then we'll cut this side. Boop. And I can always shave it down with an X-Acto too. So if I'm a little bit, have a little bit more than I want to use, then I'll be okay. Alrighty. And I had this it was just a little bit irregular. Could also just do X-Acto knife to cut out these little bits if I wanted to. There. <laughs> dog father hey you can just you know get ideas and use uh, and have some fun with it right do never never feel inferior let's see here ah let's see what am i got i got this now i gotta figure out what i was doing I think I was right about there. I had to figure out what angle I had this at, right? Nope. I think I was just leaving extra. There we go. All right. So that's the angle that I had it at. And I'm going to need to trim over a little bit of that. Um, I'm going to have to decide how I want to do this. I'm probably going to leave some of this ground because this will be like broken stone and ground and underneath the flagstones. So I got to figure out how much of this ground I want to do. Um, I probably need to draw out a flagstone pattern at this point. I do need to cut off some of this though. So let's cut off some of that. And I do want to round this corner. We don't want to leave it too regular and I need to cut off a little bit more over here. So it's just this little bit of, uh, I'm sure that, that architectural people could, could do this far better than me, <laughs> but, um, uh, I'm relearning this along with the rest of you. Cause I haven't done this in so long guys. So yeah, you can get, okay. Remember this about being impatient to get better is that your eye will always improve faster than your hand. So you're going to be able to see and acknowledge good work and, and kind of dissect what makes it better before you get the ability to necessarily duplicate it. And that can be very frustrating, but just understand that that's something that happens and just keep at it because you will get better as you practice, especially if you're practicing consciously, if you are consciously trying to be better, to get better at painting, you will improve. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Try to analyze when things go wrong, what might have gone wrong. If you're not sure, ask somebody experienced. And if you're not sure if something's working out, you know, reach out for feedback. Um, what helps is if you find a painter in the community um, 
who you get along with really well and, and uh, who seems to get your style and everything. And you can kind of make friends and, and get to a point where you're trading pictures of your work in progress and that you can give each other helpful feedback. Um, so that is that is very, very useful. I think I want to get rid of that little edge there. There. There we are. So the nice thing about this is, of course, that it'll let us you know, support our lower fringe, but then we can also, if I want to, I can put another layer of that, or I can, I'll probably put another layer of plastic art in and build up the flagstone shapes. Um, Cause I do want, I, I'm getting ambitious about this. I actually kind of want not only her standing out here on kind of the edge of a crumbling, crumbling edge of a, of a, like a courtyard or something, I actually thought I might do kind of an archway or a standing stone behind her because I've got a lot of space. I want to put her forward on the base. Um, and I love the Celtic um, work that uh, Izzy did on this art. So I would I was thinking about do, using the wolf pattern on her brooch or the dragon pattern on her staff um, and working into kind of half of a ruined doorway. Like she's standing out, you know, on the edge of the ruins of maybe like her past... Uh, her past home and she's looking down at the puny humans who killed her family and vowing revenge, something like that, you know? Um, yeah, just the yeah, usual frost giant stuff. Uh, so I'm kind of looking at the amount of space that I have back here and judging whether I'll be able to build up something in this area. And I, I kind of had thought maybe a kind of like maybe a step or two, in which case I'd have to build it off the edge back here also. Um, this is very much going to be a, a concept work in progress, guys. We're going to kind of experiment and see what we can do with this space and uh, what is successful and what is not successful. So I probably will create a couple of um, steps just kind of going in an angle like up, like it used to be part of a spiral stair. Um, and maybe, or maybe I'll just do the ruined archway. I have not decided. Um, but all of it will be scratch built if I do it because I need it. I don't have anything to hand that will work as that sort of thing. So, all right, but I'm kind of happy with the space and how it goes out right now. So I can actually glue this together. And normally we would use PVA glue, but since we do not have it, we will just use what we got. So the first thing I need to decide though is which side of this cork do I want at the top? So I'm kind of looking at it and I'm trying to see like this side, this side is thicker on this side and it's thinner there. And I kind of did want it to be crumbling away toward the underside here. So I think I am going to do, I think I am going to do this side up. So we're inverting it here and I've got to make sure that my thing is going to line up. Well, my plastic card will probably glue to my base pretty well with super glue. It's not, like I said, not ideal. Usually you want to use PVA glue, but um, we seem to have, in this hobby household, we've created a hobby fail. We have uh, run out. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Good job, dog father. Yeah, just uh, just use me as inspiration. Like, that's what I always want to be for you guys, right? I like, I've done, the, been doing this for years and years and years and years and years. So please, please do not let, you know, my level of work discourage you instead look at it as a hey and used to suck and she got here because <laughs> i used to dry brush my gaming models and you know not be great i should i need to dig out my um my mordheim model actually i kind of know where he is so maybe for next stream i will i do not own my oldest models that those were like you know seriously a long long time ago guys like 30 years three decades i'm not going to still have it but i do have a model from when i was in college early on when I was just trying to start to get better and it was before I, before I really made that effort, it was for my more time more band and it's a chaos hound from games workshop. And I've kept him all these years <laughs> because I always loved him because <laughs> I put tiger stripes on him and they're very, very, very like silly, you know, like just painted on tiger stripes. It does not look great. And I dry brushed him. So I've kept him as an example all these years of, Okay, hey, here's like, I actually started out worse than this and now look at me. So, um, you can do it too. All right. I am going to grab glue and I want a jelly kind of glue for this because, uh, it's cork and I need it to be thicker and not to soak in. So I'm going to use a Loctite ultra gel and I've got an extra bottle of that 
somewhere around here. I hope I don't run out before I'm through this stream because I don't know where it is. All right, so I need to make sure that we're kind of flush. I need to make sure that I'm lined up on my base on both sides. I can always trim it a little bit with a knife, so it's not a big deal. And I'm going to use some glue, glue dots. I'm going to put some glue dots down. Oh, I'm getting really low on my glue. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. May need help. Let's see here. If I'm out of glue and can't find my other glue thing, I'm going to be so annoyed. Maybe I have a clog. No. No, I think I'm actually low and I don't. Well, I guess we're in zap a gap then. Ah, the things that happen. Hey, Zandies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dog father. That, that happens with this hobby, right? Everybody is like, um, you know, you pick it up and then things happen. You have to put it down for a while. But most people come back to it. It was just such a nice, great, relaxing hobby. I wonder if I have my glue in this drawer. I used to keep it in this drawer. I have my bags in this drawer. I have my other things in this drawer. No. All right, fail. I'll have to look further. But for now, we're just going to go with Zappy Gap and be done, even though it's not ideal. Uh, this is not ideal because it is a wetter glue, so it is not going to be nice and fill fill gaps and kind of stick together as well. It's more going to want to soak in. So we'll see if it works. I'm going to use several dots around my edge. I'm not going to get real close to the edge because you don't want it to like squeeze out necessarily. But I want to put this here. You have a couple, you have a little bit of time where you can center it. Make sure you're flush with your edges. Ah, it's going to slide around a bit. It may not work. We'll find out. That's pretty flush. All right, we're going to let that sit for a second. And we'll actually do our little, yeah, is that what I want on my underside? Yes, it is. All right, so now we'll do another bit of glue around the edge here. And I'm not worried about this one splooshing out so much because I know the cork absorbs it so fast. And I'm going to set it, and I'm going to set it right up against the, the block, and I'm going to press all of them down for a bit. So as we're doing that, um, yeah, Pokey Tool should be able to open a glue bottle. And my, my, uh, this, uh, Loctite one is a uh, very, very small aperture. I'd have to get out a piece of wire that's even finer, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, it feels kind of empty. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it is done for. I know I have an extra bottle around here. The question is, where did I put it? Because I'm mostly organized here, but I did... It is still a new environment for me, right? So I organized my office. I organized it the way I wanted it. But there are like little particular things where you're like, okay, now where did I put that? Like yesterday I was looking for measuring cups because I was cooking last night and uh, I totally couldn't remember where I, where I put them. Like I remember so much else and I tried to organize everything so that it was, uh, it made sense, right? But uh, yeah, I failed on measuring cups. All right, that's pretty good. I'm going to let that set for just a second. And I will look for my other glue just because I have a couple seconds. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, yeah, I wish their bottles could be improved too, Pendrake. Like, I like the consistency of this glue, but it seems like there's very little in here, right? It's like, it feels like there should be more glue. And I'm just not getting it. So I'm wondering if I need maybe to store it upside down. I don't know. Because I look down, if I look down the aperture, it's clear. Like, I can see down it. I don't see any blocks. So I'm really wondering what's going on with it. It makes me sad, though, because this would be a pretty good glue for this. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Hmm. Did my top get all weird? Maybe it did. Maybe that's my problem. Let's see if I can get the glue to come out now. Oh yeah. Okay. So there is still glue and my top got s skewed. Well, that's good. Unfortunately, I've already glued this part Loctite. You're out of luck. Uh... Yeah. Clear window to see the glue level. That would be a great idea. Oh yeah. Um, Twisted Oma. I, not everybody agrees with me on this. Um, but I really get irritated when people don't paint their basing materials because for me, if I've painted my model, you know, up to the standard of whatever. And then, uh, and then I look at the base and all I see is this like, you know, really kind of blah unpainted thing. It just looks wrong to me. 
Um, it looks like the model's kind of thrown out of out of its environment into this weird area that that everything is just plastic or cork or you know it's it just doesn't look natural to me. So I am kind of a stickler for that. I believe that I I even paint my static grass. Um, you know, I, even if I buy, bought like little scenic flower things, I would paint those. If I use the natural leaves from, uh, birch pods, uh, I'm paint those, you know, it's, uh, it's just, I don't like to leave it natural. Now, given that this dark brown is a nice color to paint over. So, uh, yeah, super glue. What you going to do? Scotch gel super glue. Yeah, these are a lot of things I'm I'm not even familiar with. I'm gonna try to pick this up. Aha! Haha! Haha! Ha! Alright, so right there I can see I'm gonna have to sculpt some filler in there. But overall, this appears to have worked. Now what I am gonna have to do is crumble or add some extra crumbles down here and probably crumble. Um, a tip about using layers of cork. So obviously this makes it very obvious that you've used cork. And if you put another layer on here, you're going to see a demarcation line, no matter how awesome you are, um, you know, here, you're, you're going to be able to see it, right? So the key here is to use some green stuff or even extra bits of cork and put them over your seam line, like glue them down over your seam line and fit them in. And what that does is it totally disrupts that, uh, that appearance that you have of having layers. Because the minute you put an extra piece of cork in there, suddenly it disrupts that line to the eye. Um, and then you can you can essentially do multiple layers of cork and people have a hard time seeing. Here, let me get this in focus. There. But people will have a hard time telling, right? Because like if I take this off, you can clearly see that line but if I glue a part of this on, then it really messes up that, it messes that up visually for you so that you're more likely to ignore that seam line. You still have to work a bit. Like I'd have to take this little ledge here and probably mess it up and make it, you know, more irregular. Um, but that is one way to use. And what I will probably do actually is to do what you see here is to build up more cork going down a little bit on the space. Because remember, part of the goal of this was to make this big block be less of a big block, um, to make it more interesting and to integrate it more. Another thing that I could choose to do, although I had I actually just thought of this, would be to do like some carving down here. It would be like um, like put a, put a carved surface like this used to be a wall. Although considering this, that, that, that I'm kind of making this look like it's all broken, that's probably something I wouldn't do. Um, maybe on the backside, I would do that where it's not broken. So yeah, so that's, this is actually working pretty well. The question is, do I want to break it? I probably want to crumble it now. So I usually take a knife or a sculpting tool. The good sculpting tool for this is, where's my spade? There's my spade. The spade is a good school, good sculpting tool to rip apart cork. Cause it's, uh, it's got a nice sharp edge so you can press it. It's got a pokey part, you can press it. Often I will just use it and hopefully this is set enough, but I will just start kind of plucking apart my little cork to make it more of an irregular surface. Now, if I'm going to put another layer down here, I don't want to entirely lose my flat edge. But what I'm looking at is up here near the lip, I want it to maybe be out there, but then as it recedes, as it goes down and crumbles away, I want it to recede. So, and I'm kind of supporting this with my hands so I don't take it all off. I want to get this big part off. This is going to be hard. So I want to kind of crack off. You can get it if it's a big promontory, promontory part, a big prominent part, you can grip it with your fingernails and just slowly, because I want this, I, I want this edge, but then I want it to recede more. So I'm kind of pinching it and twisting it very, very little torque, very gently to kind of hand sculpt it into the shape I want. I do have more narrow cork also, which will be useful when I get to doing these flagstones. 
So that's looking a little bit more because you can see now where it's got this, it's got this protuberance, but then it's, it's cutting back. So essentially I can build up some broken flagstones up here. Um, and it will look more like it's like an edge that has crumbled, which is going to be awesome. It's just exactly what I wanted. So yeah, it does help if you have a mat or something down when you're working on this stuff so that you can, you know, tilt it all off into the trash when you're done, all this debris that we're creating. All right. So now we're going to ask ourselves, do we want that? There's some nice irregular features along this edge here. It looks pretty cool from the top. So I'm thinking I might keep this edge um, and not wear, not wear it away so much yet. Even though there's a lower part here where there's a divot up top, but then as you come out, there is a little shelf down here. But you can sometimes put cool little features on that kind of stuff, like a little bit of uh, snow or ice or grass or something. So I may keep it. Um, the other thing I really wanted here is I wanted an overhang up front because I'm going to put icicles hanging from it. I'm going to show you guys how I do icicles. Although I don't know where my last... Oh, there's my icicle. It finally dried. Hmm, I think I flattened it accidentally, though. <laughs> this is the problem when you're working with scenic, uh, scenic water effects. Yeah, I did. I made it flat. Oops. Um, when you just leave your icicles lying around and you accidentally put sticky notes on top of them and then mush them. <laughs> accidents in basing episode one we should just call this series accidents in basing because i know i'm going to be doing all sorts of weird stuff um but yeah save your i mean you can save your grit i try not to though robin i honestly don't save a lot of this uh the little micro grit um i've got sand and gravel that uh suffices for that and the thing is that since this stuff is absorptive um sometimes i can't depend on it to sit quite like gravel does so I'm likely to keep these bigger chunks, but I'm less likely to keep the little tiny chunks um, as far as uh, for, for basing and stuff. Because I'd more likely to use a sand and gravel mixture when it gets down to this really tiny little particulate stuff where you're... There we go. Let me get it off. But yeah, so you can keep it or not as you wish. If you don't like to use sand and gravel, then by all means, keep your little micro corks. Um, just do keep in mind that they, they will absorb stuff sometimes. If you're trying to work with super glue, uh, you might not get quite the expected results. Um, so just, yeah, just experiment, though. It's all your choice. So I'll probably also, this is actually pretty cool. I don't mind this. I don't mind this little rocky thing as long as I can continue to carry it down. I wonder. See, this is where you're just freeform making ideas. Like you're like, oh, I could, uh, I could take a piece of cork and wrap it around here. Um... I could maybe put some a feature in here or something interesting. Um, and it's all in concept at that point. This is this is us just like playing with concept at this point to see what we're going to do. Um, I agree, Hatsune, um, that bigger scraps are better for saving. Uh, yeah, I don't know the specific terms for like how to how we're um, chipping away at the edge. Um, <laughs> I that is esoteric knowledge. You guys are welcome to. <laughs> I'm like just pull away at it to make it like you know look better. <laughs> These are technical terms, right? Ah, I could throw like technical terms at you about this sort of thing, but I'm very bad at them. I, I'm more I'm more the informal Anne when it comes to basing. It's just like throw ideas at it until it looks cool. Um, but yeah, so like little pieces like this, this little uh, bit that has a flat side are, as you can see, extremely useful when you're trying to plan your next step. So I might just make a very irregular, I do like that. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep a very irregular edge here. I wonder if I have another piece that I can, I can go with that. I do. Interesting. All right. So we could do that. We could, we could marry up those pieces and put them on there. Um, I'm going to have to start chipping apart though so let's put those on there and then let's drag a bunch of uh a bunch of stuff off of them um yeah keep spitting out those facts you know like stabbing or whatever yeah stabbing that's more right um uh peel the snake if you're color placements oh nice that's nice twisted oma that sounds really useful 
Yeah, you could do all sorts of stuff with this. Like, and since I'm gonna do ice cu- ice uh, icicles, any little extra projection that I leave sticking out, I can put icicles on. So I have to keep that in mind. Uh, and I think I like where that is. So I'm gonna actually glue this on here. And since I got my thick glue to work again, yay, we'll just do that. And I'll stick it on there and I'll stick this other one on over here and then we'll mess it up because messing it up is fun. Making a mess is the best part, right guys? Boom. And then we're just going to make sure we've kind of got it in the area we want it. And we're going to just press it down, put some pressure on it. I lost my lid somewhere, but I think it went over there. I'm just glad my glue is working again. But yeah, so this is fun. So I think I need to think about my flagstones next. Or maybe I'll just keep working on this. But yeah, so essentially, um, this is dark brown is a nice base. You could paint some lighter browns over it and you'd be just fine. Uh, leave some of the dark brown showing. Uh, I often will paint it gray in shades of gray and brown to make it look like crumbled stone or ground work. Um, I find it does make really good rocks. And uh, it's also good if you're doing like a river bank because it's really easy to get that clump that uh, crumbled soil look to it. So really the only thing with working with cork, you just got to remember to disguise those super flat areas because you'd never get those in nature and disguise the joints. So on this, you can see, see that line running through it. So I'm going to have to disguise that, but I'll get to that. That's one of the last things I'll do. What I'm most interested in here now is just getting a shape that I like. And I'm going to crumble apart, uh, crumble away a lot of this lower area on this particular cork piece because I want to start making kind of a taper, a tapered groundwork thing so that it goes down toward the front. Um, doo -doo -doo. And I do want to take, one of the things I want to take out is this piece. And like I said, if you're, the nice thing about this spade sculpting tool when you're doing this is you can really dig it in and with a little minimal pressure, as long as you're supporting this part, you can kind of rip away small chunks very precisely so that you uh, you can concentrate on getting exactly the shape that you want. Um, the cork is going to naturally shear along its uh, the lines of its uh, little pebbly construction, but you can alter that with a little bit of attention and a sharp tool. I used to use an exacto for this, but I think I like the spade even better because it's not going to gouge the woodwork or make like real thin lines. It's gonna it it just seems to pull this stuff apart a little bit easier. There we go. So I've got a nice rough line there now. So if I do another one, I'll just do it here and leave this to be a chunk of uh, stone or rock suggestion. Let's see here. Maybe I'll use another chunk of, and I'm keeping all these big chunks here for exactly what I told you before to see if I can fit them in, uh, overlap them a bit and uh, break up some of this stuff. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. So I want to go from here on out now. So I think I'm going to, I love this square piece. So maybe I'll use one of my other pieces that's not so square. Oh, this is good. All right. So I want a piece that's there. That actually looks really good. I'm going to just kind of break it. Kind of figure out where I want it. I could at this point even project out like this where it's uh makes a lower ledge if i wanted to you know it depends on what you're doing if you're doing a big elaborate base with like okay if i was doing a springtime unicorn base <laughs> i would uh maybe do a waterfall you could you could totally assemble cork to be the basis for a waterfall and then have the water go down over it in fact a lot of people use cork for exactly that um because you can make these beautiful irregular shapes with little natural divots in them and you could just make the water going down off the top um, I didn't really concept that for this one. I don't think I really want to have like a stream running through her flagstones. So um, I think I'm not going to leave quite as much of the sticking out, but it was a good idea. It's just uh, something to point out. That's getting better. All right. And I want it, I do want it more. This one has some really good shapes. Sometimes it hurts me. I'm just like, oh, that's a great shape. Oh, but it doesn't fit my concept. Oh, now I'm getting, now I'm getting a little close to um, hurting the integrity of the things. So now I have to pay a little attention. That's actually pretty good right there. 
I might just break off this bit. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try to do surgery. I really want the rest of this. Start at the outer edge, pull it out. Takes a little patience. And of course you are pulling all these nice big chunks that can be used as rocks on regular 28 millimeter bases. There. I don't think I need, I think I can just break off this chunk. There we go. So that actually, and that's great because now I've got a little bit of a scoop down here. This matches up really well with this area and now it goes down to there and I can probably end it there. Um, and that'll give me a nice kind of a broken rock face, crumbled rock face here to work with. So let's take down some of this stuff and make it more irregular by scratching away at it, breaking it up. I think I'm going to glue it on at this point so I make sure that I nail its placement. Let's see. Do to do, do brownies. <laughs> yeah, I want to make cookies this uh, weekend, I was just saying. Not that we need uh not that we need more junk food in this house. I've been we've been very good. Actually, David the devil has lost weight since he's been working from home. He's lost five pounds. Where everybody else is probably gaining it. Um let me get this on here. Glue, 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 glue. There we go. I have not lost weight. I've I've stayed about the same, which actually, considering I stayed about the same as I was before through moving, that's pretty much, that's a good accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. Um, there. So I will have to make this face looking at us more regular, and I'll deal with that in a second. But I wanted to glue it down, get it set. This makes a really nice shape here. You want to, you don't want to just have this big chunk, right? You want to have kind of irregular shapes, which is why I kept this little cut in here. Um, and you know, all these little features here and how it cuts back up here. You want a nice irregular surface that you're dealing with. Um, it's pleasing. It's pleasing to the eye. I'm going to take a little bit off of this. Cause I want this, I've got a flat surface here, so I'm going to want to scar that up. But it is still gluing, so I have to be patient. I don't like being patient. There we go. This feels actually right now when I'm pressing on it, this feels really solid. So the super glue has done the trick for us, uh, even though it's not ideal. The the good thing is, if you can get super glue to work, is it works much faster than uh, the normal glue, the Elmer's glue or whatever you're using, wood glue, any any of those types of white glue. Um, it of course sets far faster, so you can put things together a lot faster this way. This is actually starting to look pretty cool. I am going to thin down this. I do need this layer to be pretty, to taper down a lot thinner as it hits close to here. So I am going to let the glue set pretty well because I'm going to have to gouge out so much of this and I don't want to rip it off after I put it on. So let's look at this side. I'm going to need some more flat, flat areas. So yeah, you can use this either way. If you've got a f one of the edges of the cork, you can do it this way, right? And uh, just break it off. Um, or you can cut a flat edge on and utilize that pretty well as well. You can also do it more sideways. Like I could, I could possibly manage to make this work, but then you have to scar the face here. The advantage of using it flat is that you've already got a ragged edge that you can work with that will naturally suggest texture for you. Um, and so sometimes it's easier just to cut away, cut, uh, make it, where's my knife? So maybe make this edge a little flatter so that I can utilize it naturally against this thing. Um, because otherwise I'll have to, I'll have to really mar this up. Now that's perfectly doable, but I find that it crumbles more naturally this way. So let's do that. Let's get our cutting, cutting pad and I like this piece because it's almost uh, the size, the width I want. So we will cut off its uh, backside and make it more regular. Yeah, it's beautiful here too. Yesterday was amazing. Um, Sharky, I do, I do use, actually I'm, I'm more on, I, I am, I'm on a diet that like can go keto, but I'm not being real strict on it. I do have days where I do slightly more carbs, but I am, when I do cookies, I use almond flour and it's, uh, I use the Wellbees, but I also, the, the secret to gluten-free low-carb baking is um, 
defatted almond flour, which is uh, Sucrin does one of them called Mendelmel, I think. It's essentially uh, a reduced fat almond flour. And because they've taken the fat out of it, um, which is very anti-keto, but uh, because they're taking the fat out of it, it's got a really fine texture, like the, a fine texture that's a lot like white flour. So what I do is I use mostly just Welby's almond flour, which is the full fat version. But then I sub maybe a quarter of the recipe, a quarter of the weight for the uh, defatted. And I find that it creates a structure in my baked goods that is a lot closer to a natural um, wheat flour structure. So I can fool myself more. Because normal almond flour does uh, does tend to give you a bit of a crumbly texture, which when you're doing banana bread is fantastic. But when you're doing some cookies, like shortbread cookies, is not fantastic. So. Hmm. <sighs> and uh, as far as recipes for keto baking, I honestly just adapt regular recipes. Um, you, if you do your flours by weight, you should be able to adapt with just a little bit of um, experimentation. But if I find that if I do my flours by weight, I, I get very close. Like I, my mom sent me um, Christmas cookie recipes that she, you know, get made for us when we were growing up. And I really just uh, looked at the weights and uh, substituted exactly, you know, using the weight of the almond flour instead of the weight of the, you know, so like one quarter cup of almond flour is only 24 grams. One one quarter cup of wheat flour is more like um, maybe 40. So there we go. That's pretty, that's pretty flush. I think that's going to work. Um, so you just want it mostly flush. The Using gap filling glue like this Loctite means you don't have to get your edge perfectly flush to have it stick. Um, I do want to break off parts of this though before I even put it on, because I know I don't want it all. Try to rip it off till it looks interesting. And I've still got way too much of it. It's way too wide. So we're gonna break off a fair amount. And this is why I keep a bag for little pebble, little pebbles of cork. Oh, it's resisting me. Let's see, this may be touch and go. I may end up in two pieces. Yeah, I did. Yeah, but that's okay. My other piece will still work. I just need to uh, break it down a bit. So let's see, how wide is that? That's probably still too wide unless I'm looking to create an effect there. Hmm, but do I cut it now or cut it later? I think I'm going to cut it now. Any questions? Yeah, almond flour, if you're going to do keto baking, almond is the only way. Like, a lot of people use coconut, but coconut is just fraught with peril since it absorbs so much liquid. Learning to bake with it really was a trial, so I gave up. Um, I do think that it's good if you want to make uh, keto crackers, though, because you want that crispy texture with really low moisture. Um, so that's a uh, that's the only time I would use coconut. But otherwise, yeah, I think almond flour is necessity for uh, for keto baking. I'm gonna rip this one down even more. That's getting a bit better. There. Ooh, and I made a gap. Okay, that'll work. Can I can use that gap. I need to putty in some areas here anyway. Let me see. Banana sandwich. Yum. I used to eat those when I was a kid. Yeah, that's the same with, yeah, for super glue, that's totally the case, Miss Dim. I mean, here I've got a lot of gaps, so I want something thick and goopy that's going to essentially, like, glom everything together. I only ever use, the the thinnest I use is the medium, um, and I never use the super thin super glue. Because in my experience, there are very few things other than styrene models that uh, that fit that well. 
So medium is all for Reaper miniatures. Medium is what I use. Um, and if I do have to do styrene, I'm going to use a plastic glue. All right, let's make some goop and stick these guys together. Goop. Aha. That's good. More goop here. Ah. This is kind of fun hanging out with you guys, throwing the space together. I promise it will get more interesting. Ta-da. We're just going to press those down. Toasted peanut butter and bacon. Yeah, I've heard that's good. But yeah, Miss Dimp, you are, you are dead on with the uses of glue for sure. They're definitely, do not use one glue for everything. There are different usages that will be optimal. Yay, we're getting there. I'm actually really excited about this. Like by the time I'm done with this stream, there we go. And we are actually, we, has it been an hour already, Justin? Yeah, hour and seven minutes, according to this. Oh, my God. Well, I'm almost done, though. I'm going to keep going and do just this little bit. So we've been sitting here watching me play with Crumbly Cork for... <laughs> ah, only 85. Yeah, that's the temperatures that I miss. Like, I will admit that California feels pretty cold to me right now. But that's because I'm the kind of girl who, when it got up to 90, I was like, oh, it's nice out. So I do, uh, I do miss. You always use thick for, for minis. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I will admit that for miniatures, I've used the ultra gel a fair amount, Miss Dib. So yeah, you could use thicker. I just like Zappagap. I like its flexibility. Um, so I will utilize it often. It's a glue I've been using for years and years. You know, you get used to a product and you're just like, yeah, I know what it does. I know how it reacts. So I'm just going to stick with it. All right. So really... That is what I want. And I want to cut off about half of it. Because I want it to recede. So I'm going to slice that off. And I'm excited about this project, actually, guys. Because I haven't done big bases for so long. There, I made that kind of flat. But I'm okay with that. And then... I think I've got a little bit that I can use down here. Ah, so really this is kind of fun because you're just playing Tetris with cork pieces. <laughs> but this is the same way, like I would be working with layers of cork to make interesting shapes, even if I'm kind of going in the reverse right here, right? I'm, I'm going down on a base instead of building something up. But this is the type of technique that I would use um, to build up cork in sheets if I was doing larger outcroppings on a base for, say, a big dinosaur or a dragon. I would just be building it up instead of building it down the side of a, a block like this. So it's not that different. Let me get my, I'm gonna cut this down actually. I'm trying to get my little, uh, my little cork blocks to work here. Up, oh, other way. There. There. Yeah, I may just sculpt a little bit right down there. Just to, you know, sometimes you can't find the perfect piece to fill in the last bit. And one thing you can do with this, guys, is it is usually hard enough, if you get a nice hard piece, that when you put green down, you can press it to get the texture you want. So you can use a piece of harder cork as a, or firmer cork as a press mold type of thing to get your cork texture onto green stuff if you use a blob here and a blob there to make it uh, fit in better. So let me do that. I want to glue this piece down. Bloop. This is fun. Why don't I do this more often? Oh yeah, time. So maybe we can get this model all pretty and done and for ReaperCon, whenever the next ReaperCon is, I can bring her and enter her. There we go. I also have the option, yeah, I do kind of want to, I want to have a little piece that goes right there. So I'll probably just use green stuff to kind of simulate an area there. And I do want to take this and make it a little more regular, rip off a little bit of it. 
I like that piece though. I'm going to keep that piece. So I may need to just put some glue in there actually because I don't think he's really glued down. There. That should glue him. That should set it. And that gives me that nice little bridging area there. So that's a cool and interesting shape on that side and a cool and interesting shape on that side. So now all I need to do is wait for this to dry, then use my spade to, you know, to really mess up some of these areas. Uh, another thing you can do to disguise the join line between layers is that you can like dig out a hole that covers both layers. Like you're digging out a little cave or something like here where I've got this hole, I could very carefully dig out this piece here and it'll, it, it, once again, it will, it'll disrupt this, this line that we see. So if you do a combination of like digging out holes that cross layers and adding chunks that cross layers and maybe even a little bit of putty if you want a little milliput or a little aves or a little green to disguise your layers there and you end up with a beautiful like organic natural looking you know chunky rock face or um, you know waterfall face or stream bed bank or anything like that um, this stuff is great for that so highly recommend that you get your hands on some stuff <sighs> Yeah, I have a I have a lighter tan, thinner cork that I think I'm going to use for flagstones up here. Uh, is what I'm going to do. Robin. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, this dark cork. I wish I don't know where my other light cork is right now. I think I put it in a uh, bin, but it's around here. I have so much basing stuff, guys. Oh my gosh. All this basing, all this beautiful basing stuff that I've had for so long. Ah, oh, there it is. This is my light cork. Light cork. This. Um, and this is the... Here, I'll get it out and show you. Oh, and this is something that Amy Brem shared with me back in the day, but you can also use textured wallpaper. This is a textured wallpaper probably just meant to do like, like a mini tile. Um, but you can use this by gluing it down to cork also and get, uh, it's, this scale is really good for small miniatures. The problem with the wallpaper is it's a little foamy and flexible. So again, you need to be able to pin down, uh, into an underlying base that has stability in order to get it to work really well. But yeah, so this is my thin cork. And as you can see, it's quite thin compared to my, it's about half the thickness of this other one, I think. Yeah, it's about half. So this might be better for if I'm trying to bulk up tiles um, with plastic card, if I'm trying to make big chunky tiles on top of my, of this layer, um, essentially cutting up pieces of plastic card in the shapes of the uh, tiles I want, gluing them down on top of this and then cutting this out will give me a nice thick stone tile. And then I can either use the rough edge or I can putty over it to make it more smooth if I wanted. Um, and this is finer grain. You are absolutely right, Robin. What Robin's saying is absolutely on the nose. This is a, you can see it's a much finer grain. It's not nearly as ch big chunky as this one. You can see it on the top too. So you see, you can see the big chunks here and the littler chunks here. So these two, both side, both pieces of cork are very, very useful. Um, for big construction, I like the thick stuff, the five eighths inch. And for the little construction, I think this is a quarter inch. Um, but yeah, so this, this be very good for, and even thinner, if you can get even thinner, those can be good for flagstones too. I think the thicker is going to work for her because she's so big. So this, this is an okay floor tile, chunky floor tile, especially if I'm, you know, using it up on this. Um, but for a small figure, I might only use a thicker plastic card because, uh, of scale, right? Is your, you're not going to see as thick of a floor tile um, with a 28 millimeter construction. So there I might just use a slight, slightly thicker plastic card than this. Um, or I might use this plastic card and just green stuff in a little bit thicker. You could put a layer of green down on the bottom of one of these and just let it set, um, and, and use it that way. Or you could put a layer of green down and texture it, make it more or less flat, and then, you know, cut it into flagstones. You could do all that. Green stuff is good for that because since it doesn't set super hard, since it's kind of rubbery when it's, uh, it's, it's still got a plasticky kind of feeling to it. You can cut through it. You can score it when it's, when it's set. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature of it that you could slice through. It does take some effort. So it's up to you what you, how you want to do it, but 
you could also do it wet, score it then, and then you only have to cut through the plastic card um, when you want to cut your flagstones out. There's there's every there's so many ways to do all this stuff, guys. So really, it is just your mileage may vary. Reach for the component pieces that you're very familiar with, that you're comfortable with, and see what you can do. And then if you do something really awesome, people are going to ask you, oh my god, how did you do that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this was a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby. I mean, it's probably cork. If you look up cork sheets, um, what they're sold for is coasters uh, to make your own coasters and uh, some other stuff. So if you uh, if you look up cork sheets on Amazon or on the internet, you may be able to find different widths, I would hope. And usually the thicker it is, the, the heavier grain it's going to be, and the thinner it is, the finer grain, just like Robin was saying. So, so yeah, so this is actually coming along really well. I'm happy with this. Um, I will prepare next time to show you how to like irregularize this surface and I'll figure out how I'm going to do my flagstones so we can make those. That'll be tomorrow. Um, and maybe I'll do some green stuffing here too, to kind of uh, extend my texture. I need to figure out what I'm doing with the back of the base. I could just leave it. I could make, uh, make it more structured. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. If I decide to do a set of stairs and extend this further off the edge, I may do more of this kind of texture. Um, I just, I don't like the big wooden block with nothing on it. So that's why I wanted to do kind of a cool sculpted effect on it. So yeah. Oh, Michaels does sell them. So yeah, you should be able to find cork. But yeah, it is, it is just such a useful tool when you're building up big structures. So, all right, well, let's, uh, it's, it's 1050, so let's call it there. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'll just refine it. I'll work on refining it tomorrow with you guys and use some green stuff and we can play around with it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. This was a, a departure from the usual Anne show, um, but at least it's kind of, you know, you can see me build up the base for her and experiment with it. Um, and pretty much this series will stop when we have a base that I think looks good for her. Uh, and then I can mount her on it. Um, the nice thing about using the wood block with the plastic art up top is even if I put an extra layer of cork with flagstones, it's still going to be thin enough for me to pin her onto it, right? So I also have to think about if, um, cause she's kind of rounded on the bottom. If I want to put her on top of, um, of something else, I don't know. Or if I just want to file down her bottom a little bit, cause she's a bit curved. They have her on a rock as I recall. Um, on her bone space with snow where you could put snow around it. So I'll have to think about how I want to uh, put her down. I have to experiment. Anyway. All right. Yay. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, wine and wine and orc dot com pair of article pages showing how wine corks are made. Interesting. Yeah, I'm trying, uh, you know, I'm trying to get back there, dog father, because I'm trying, I'm doing a lot of work for my, you know, doing, doing stuff for myself and, um, and tr looking forward to doing some competition pieces. So all of this stuff is, is things I want to embrace again and get more into the display bases. I used to be good at them. I've got so many cool materials that I can use, uh, which I unearthed when I moved. I'm like, I have all this awesome stuff. I need to use it. So, so yeah, we totally, totally need to get on that. So I'm glad it was fun to watch and not terribly boring. <laughs> it's just plopping cork pieces around, but it's super fun. So, all right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Justin, do we have a raid? Yes, we do. We're going to be raiding Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy the Brush. Awesome. Excellent. That is fantastic. All right, guys. Well, awesome. look, I actually like, haha. -ha. All right. I can say a proper goodbye now. Um, I, I remember to deactivate my my uh, paint sploosh. So we're all, we're all good today. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys again late. Wait, wait, it's Thursday. That means painting platinum at 3 p.m. Central and none other than the infamous Ed and Ron for Reaper Live tonight at 6 p.m. Am I correct, Justin? Correct. Awesome. So make sure to tune in and give everybody your love and hang out with the community. Okay, guys, you have a great day and I will talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Awesome. See you guys. <laughs>